In this video, we are going to be talking about Love Streams, which was written, directed, and starred John Cassavetes, as well as his wife, Jenna Rollins, and Seymour Casal. My guest today is John D. Babcock, who is a writer, a freelance writer for Turner Classic Movies, also for Sketchworks Comedy, his YouTube channel, which you can also find on Mopefy TV. And he has a web series called The Campaign, which will be at the Sterable uh, Festival in New York, Web Series Festival. John, thanks again for joining me. Yeah, no, thank you for asking me back, Robert. It's, it's great. Yeah, no, it's always a, always a pleasure. So today yeah. we're talking about Love Stream, which, you know, technically is John Cassavetes' last film, if we don't include uh, Big Trouble. Right. How, do you, how do you feel about this one? I, I um, up until, you know, knowing we were going to watch it, I, I popped it in again. I hadn't seen it in a number of years. And, and I'm, I'm glad I I'm glad I did because, um, you know, it, it really is a, a, a strong helping from from John. It kind of, yeah. you know, kind of kind of goes back to some uh, familiar themes uh, that he has. But uh, it, it's really a, a, a strong showing. And, and it was nice because, uh, you know, then I, you know, read up a little bit out it to kind of refresh my memory on everything. But it was you know, to, to know that uh, Canon Films uh, at the time, you know, kind of gave him basically, here's your money, you know, go yeah. make it, you have total control. Kind of a uh, situation that, you know, he was always looking for money from, but, you know, not having to fund it himself, money from somewhere else and, you know, them uh, t trusting him and to, to, to make the film he wanted to make and to turn it in uh, when he wanted and, you know, how he wanted. And so it was, it was nice that, you know, uh, his last one, uh, you know, that yeah. he wrote and directed, uh, he was given kind of that that freedom to uh, to do it the way he really wanted to do it. Yeah, um, I agree. And the irony is, if you look at like the movies Canon made, they made nothing like his yeah. group. They were like really like like action packed and Delta karate. Force. And, yeah. yeah, and all it's the... funny that they first of all A would fund it and B would let him do whatever he wanted. Uh, you know, I'm sure you saw on the DVD uh, the um, uh, the Criterion the, that that documentary. I'm almost not crazy. Yeah, yeah. On the making of the film, shot by Michael Ventura, where he talks uh, uh, that they, the producers in the in the interview him and he says, you know, America needs to know that they have their own Bergman. I'm like, yeah, that's basically not that he was exactly like Bergman, but if you com if there's someone to compare him to, right, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a, so that's a pretty, I thought that's like a really simple, well, <laughs> mm -hmm. well yeah. said way of, of, of putting it. What, what, what do you think the, the essence of this story is? What do you think John was exploring in this film? I, I think again, it was, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if the right word is, is broken people, but you know, just kind of um, uh, in a way people that are, um, uh, you know, have their own kind of problems and, and, and issues with things and, and, and their point of views. And, you know, you're, you're, it's not a kind of a line of, okay, we see this person and they have these problems. And at the end of the film, all their problems are resolved. You know, it, it wasn't definitely right. that. It was just kind of, it was definitely a character uh, piece about, you know, kind of uh, this brother and sister and, and their relationship, but then their relationships with, with other people. Uh, so what was he trying to say? Uh, <laughs> or just uh, explore? I don't think John necessarily yeah. was was no. was ever like a. Well, he somewhat was a not. He wasn't necessarily a message director, but he right. certainly just brought you into that to the world of the people he was talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think it. I think the the title says you know love streams. I think it yeah. it, it kind of explores uh, different types of, of of love and what happens. You know, not at the beginning when it's all you know, flowers and all that champagne and everything. But, you know, later on as, as love and people age and, and where that, where that yeah. goes after a certain amount of time and yeah. how you try to keep that alive and, you know, what people will do for it, even, even, you know, later or, or in the middle of their life, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, which, which you know, Jenna kind of explains in, in the film, love is a stream, you know, that kind yeah. of, uh, that great, that great moment for for her so I, I i think it's looking at looking at you know kind of love from that perspective john obviously was you know in his 50s when he was making this so you know he wasn't um young like when he made shadow so he's, he's yeah. got a little bit of uh 
mileage it might be the best or worst word to use but he's got a little experience i guess in that and is exploring uh that kind of relationship well that's a good point you mentioned earlier like uh, on this theme of uh of people who are you know yeah i mean broken or or just have have been through a number of relationships yeah. and are now alone mm -hmm. and and what does that how do they how do they how do they live their life? How do they find love? How do they find yeah. uh, happiness? And, you know, I find it's really about these two people. Uh, you have Robert played by Cassavetes and then his sister, uh, Sarah. And, you know, Robert is, to me, is a really interesting character because everything is transactional in his yeah. life. I mean, he has his secretary, every, he's surrounded. It's funny, he wants to be alone. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to have this capacity to love anyone. But yet yeah. he's surrounded by prostitutes in his house. He's got his secretary living there with her child. But these are all people that he's paying, that they work for him. So there isn't any kind of emotional involvement right. that yeah. he, he has to have with them. It's very much, you know, just sign the check, go sign the check. And he gets what he needs from them. Then to see yeah. that when he got emotional, like when Jenna comes, as soon as he sees Jenna again, he he leaves you know he right. as soon as he feels something you know he had they have that hug in the car and obviously there's a, there's a kinship there's a there's a strength and then he's he goes with his son to vegas you know and then right. yeah. yeah later on when they're together they dance and then he goes to to meet diane abbott and her mother so he's always getting out when he's feeling something and i think he even mm. says that what he says to her at one point when she's opening up, up about her life he goes no emotion no no emotion in in reading um in, in brushing up on love streams and, and reading in uh, ray carney's book uh he he kind of pointed out that uh, love streams uh, or cassavetti talks about how love streams is consciously weaving in elements of his previous films and yeah. his character Robert kind of is living that life that the, uh, uh, like the, the characters and husbands wish they had, where no yeah. attachments and they were able to. But you know, it looks good from the husband's perspective because they're quote unquote miserable. But then you know, Robert is a little also miserable yeah. um, in that. So you know, it, it's interesting that he painted that you know that that character in, in love streams as uh be, having that freedom and you know no attachments but not being happy or for, you know or fulfilled really apart from like the material things right um which which you know wasn't wasn't giving him what he what he needed at, at all and, um but yeah it's an interesting character i i, I and i always have to um uh, think watching it was like what what would have John Voight done um <laughs> had yeah. he stayed on the project yeah um, it would have been it would have been so it would have been so different I mean yeah. it would have been totally different and you really have to, you'd have to have seen the stage plays to, yeah. to know what what he was like in the part but I imagine he, he would have been an entirely you know different animal in that part um uh, this relationship with the son I also find quite interesting because he, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, he meets uh, his the, his his ex-wife drops her son off, and he hasn't even met this child before, and he just thought again, again, transactions. He's writing money for them, yeah. you know. He's he's obviously been paying child support, uh, but she wants to go uh, out with her husband. She's remarried and. She needs Cassavetes as Robert to watch this boy, and you know, sure enough, he he also destroys this relationship. I mean, but but he yeah. he he has a, a humor in it to an extent. Like, you know, in the more even, I I couldn't help but laugh when he's introducing them to everyone in the house, and then the kid runs off, and then he chases him in the car. Like, there's something funny about that, yeah, you know? And yeah. and 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 in the morning when they're having breakfast, he's like, "What can I get you for you? A Coke, beer? Yeah, right. You know, like he's a kid, cereal, milk." juice you know <laughs> right exactly yeah showing yes. how how out of that understanding or that world you know, oh yeah Robert really is yeah he's how... totally you're right yeah he was he's just he's he, he was totally ignorant and again he, he there some there seems to be something between them you know the, the little boy uh starts to tell her what's going on in his house how the the, the stepfather's uh abusive right with, yeah. uh, with his mother and you know they go off to Vegas, and sure enough, he says, "I gotta, I gotta go out with some women, and you stay here all night." And you know, I mean, 
I, I it just it's heartbreaking that scene when he comes back it and yeah. you know he's been out all night with hookers and he's a mess. And, yeah. And then sure enough, you know, he he starts to hug him, and I think it's just it's that I took that really as a moment of him just saying you know at least not in verbally but why do i do this you know yeah I, yeah I understanding he hates yeah. himself oh yeah yeah definitely you know not that yeah kicking himself for you know doing what he did but then not having the uh the, the tools really to do anything but that yeah um you know he doesn't know any he's not gonna sit around and, and color in a coloring book with, with his son that's completely out of his you yeah. know, comfort area and, and realm of understanding so he kind of it's, it's, it's almost like he in Vegas he got a little like stir crazy in that room and it was like okay you stay here and I'll which is you know um, as, as as someone with a child it is a little <laughs> uh, oh, disturbing I know. to watch and you know uncomfortable it's to say so the least. it's so disturbing i mean yeah you you leave a child alone all night that, that's, they're gonna be traumatized <laughs> yeah but yeah. this guy yeah. is just so self-destructive and of course right. you know you see when he drops him off and he gets beat up and another thing i notice is that he he often in the film is is getting into these situations that are violent like even in the first scene i, I never noticed this before his hand is bandaged oh right yeah yeah and you don't know what happened but then when he goes out later with diane abbott you know he falls down the stairs because he drank yeah so he, his head bleeds then he gets into to the fight with the stepfather and when he goes home you know he smashes the mirror and he's and again so he's he's i i i really took that as um again just feed that that self-hatred that that mm -hmm. self-destructiveness was also uh him with uh he's a bit of a he's a bit of a brawler you know and he's a bit yeah, of a, yeah. from his drinking but that never yeah. popped out to me for that's the thing about john his movies you always see so much yeah you definitely you definitely will um it, it is almost you know like okay i need to go back every 12 to 18 months and rewatch. Yeah. you know it's like canon. a whole new movie yeah exactly to pick out oh this you know which was um, and then even in, you know, looking back, as I sent you the, uh, 1984 yeah. Ebert review, yeah, yeah. uh, which was great to kind of hear them talk about, you know, how, what a great, uh, not predictable filmmaker he was and how yeah. you know, they really loved the unpredictability. And that's, and that's true. And I even felt that in some films that John was in that he didn't direct, uh, that you didn't know what his character yeah. what he was so, going to do so spontaneous yeah exactly and, and yeah. which is which is great you're like okay i don't know where this is going so i'm i'm glued i have to watch because i don't know what's going to happen yeah. um what's and and the same with with uh, with this there's there's um i think roger ebert mentioned this but it's it's a character story it's not an event or a plot right story right. so you're watching you know characters and i think if you go into that not i think you can go into that um expecting to want to say okay what's the event what's the thing going to happen here and, and you can almost find yourself fighting it you really have to kind of go right. with john's films and, and let him take you on this journey and not try to make it a film that it's not because that's what <laughs> everyone's used to <laughs> well yeah and, 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 and as i'm sure you know john always dealt with the character Right, and then the story would come from that. He would never look at, well, how do we get to, you know, where, where's, where's, uh, what incident needs to happen here? And but yeah. it was, and it's true. I mean, because if you look at the stories, I mean, there is a, a story, and and they 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 deal. They actually are heightened situations. I mean, it's not every day that uh, your long lost son is coming over, right? Or right. It, it's not every day that your in Jenna Rowland's case with, with Sarah, that um, you're you're getting a divorce and you're separated and your strength tells you to go off to Europe. I mean, he still yeah, has yeah. these, uh, uh, they're very, they're, they're heightened drama comedies, you know, but they they bring you right into into life, into to right. the, the things that uh, people struggle with every single day. Uh, how did you, what did you see? I saw a lot more with this character, Sarah, played by Jenna this time. What did you see this time around? Yeah, I um, I kind of, I guess, initially watching it, you know, uh, years ago, it was more like, okay, well, this woman is unbalanced and that's right. why. But this time, I guess I was a little bit more um, um, easygoing or, or, or favorable 
towards her. Not that you know she, she's she's desperate uh, right. at this moment. I think she's desperate to keep her her marriage and her family and her life uh, now that it's gotten to this point still together. But uh, I don't necessarily uh, think she's as uh, unbalanced as I may have in the first one. Like oh this well I, I can see why this woman is you know he's divorcing her and the you know all that because she's really kind of but uh, right. I had a little bit more of a. Uh, Maybe maybe it's age, but uh, from from me, but you know a little bit more of a caring about about her and, and what she was trying to, to accomplish. Yeah, I felt I felt the same way because you know it's funny how you had mentioned earlier there there's there's things in this film that you see in like in husbands and there certainly Sarah is like the sister of Mabel Longetti, you know, right, woman yeah. under the influence. Like you're you're thinking, is there a mental illness here or is she just really quirky? Because you know off the top she talks about going to funerals with her daughter because she you know she wants to go and cheer people up because she's this woman who has so much love in her yeah. and she loves way too much i mean i think that's she's so suffocating with her with her family and you know she's she's just quirky she's she's yeah. odd and but i think she's you know this is the first time you see a character in a Casavetti's film go to a, an analyst, which is a very, you know, Woody Allen or, or Paul Mazursky. Yeah. They, they, those, in those movies by those directors, the characters were always more, um, you know, introspective and, and John's characters often weren't. But in her case, she is really actually trying to get to know herself. And as she says to John, her brother Robert later, like she's trying to find a balance and right. the psychiatrist that played by her brother, her real brother, General Roland's brother, yeah. um, says to her, you know, like, go get a sex life, go travel <laughs> to Europe. Uh, you and that and the whole film is she's struggling, right? Like she's but again, it goes back to this, she does too much. Like she go and it's funny because she goes to Europe and all these bags, she brings yeah, like yeah. her whole life with her. Uh, and and another scene, I never could figure out why he had her go to that bowling alley. And then it wasn't until I watched it last night that she says to the guy working, I'm here to find the sex, yeah, yeah, to, find, yeah. to pick up a guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and who the hell goes to a bowl? Only Casavetti's would think of a woman a bowling doing Bowling alley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly a woman like Jenna Rollins. Yeah, yeah and she's got no bowling <laughs> shoes on. She's in a black dress. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that is that is very good. And yeah, there's a different connection between Mabel and and uh, and, and Sarah yeah. in this. And, you know, I, I, it's just um, it's like you're wondering what at the time, you know, how she never got uh, nominated at least for, for Love Streams. I mean, I know she didn't win her woman under the influence which was yeah she was nominated i think she was well, she was academy award nominated for gloria and that's right yeah a, wo a woman of the influence and i know ray carney made a, a comment about that because it's interesting because those are are two films that are somewhat easier to follow particularly gloria whereas mm. his other films are more much more rougher yeah. and 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 doesn't have a traditional uh, that kind of you know traditional yeah. structure even though woman has those long sequences and it's, right right but it's it's a little easier to to digest so uh, what a coin you know i don't think yeah. i don't think it's an accident that it's those two movies right you now that daughter, daughter of the acclaim right even though you know she was absolutely <laughs> i know she got an honorary oscar but you know she yeah i recognized you know long before oh, that. i agree and speaking of Gloria, too, uh, I kind of pointed out as I was watching, it was like, okay, Cassavetti's in Love Streams has his long lost son, but then, you know, Gloria, there's there's the kid as well. So it was interesting that those, because he made Gloria and then Love Streams, but there's, you know, kind of a, a, a child element. Uh, and, you know, he's had kids in other films before, but, you know, it's kind of like this one on one adult child yeah. element in both of those, Jenna and the, uh, the kid in Gloria, and then him and. Um, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, which was kind of. Um, I don't know. Interesting, and I guess at that time his own kids were getting uh, older, uh, yeah. you know, teenage or something like that. So maybe there was, I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, yeah. it's just... <clears throat> that's a good point, and and it's true. I mean, it, they really, they are almost like well, I mean, in Gloria, yeah, the young boy is like the co-star, and and right. even in Abby, the the young boy, who I believe that's Sam Shaw, the photographer's grandson. Right. I he's the grandson of John's, the photographer John's friend. Yeah and who also produced some of his films and you know that's a pretty 
that's a pretty substantial part and and not easy to act. I mean, I believe John sometimes had to be mean to him to get right. to get to to get some of the, some of those uh, reactions out of him because I mean he right. he has to really get upset. You know, it's it's quite heartbreaking. I thought the kid was really good. The way in which it ends, did you think that that was an optimistic ending, and or or what did did you think that was pessimistic I, <laughs> or in between? I, 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 I um, landed on more in between. It was just, you know, kind of in the same way husbands is, yes, he, he goes home, but you know, when he goes inside the house, he's going to get, you know, chewed out or you know, at the very least. Right, um, right, so right. So this, right. I kind of, you know, this, it was just, it, it just kind of, yeah, it was just kind of in, in between, you know, it, it's, it's never a, a as clear cut I think I think it's more I think it's more you know uh, uh, a, a lot with Cassavetti's film. There's more of an interpretation of how you see it. Some yeah. people can yeah. view it as you know oh is what a downbeat, and others would view it as optimistic. And I kind of landed in be in between. It, it's definitely uh, you know kind of a uh, real real life. I mean because you you don't have those huge upswing moments you know re really in life other than you know marriage and you know some, some other you know uh, large events like that. But when something occurs it's usually just okay well now it's that 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 chapter is done that's still you know over there's no fanfare or you know typically so um and which which i kind of you know really like in his films is the is those endings depending on where you know the viewer is but for, for love streams uh, i just kind of viewed it as you know kind of in between a, a happy and and a, a downbeat ending if you will i don't, I don't think i actually i don't think i ever thought it as being a my interpretation never being a downbeat or a, a, a downer um, more I guess more on middle of the road or optimistic uh, for me anyway yeah I agree road. because I agree because you know on the one hand and I, I love this is it's so you know people forget how funny John's movies are you know and and she says to him Sarah I'm gonna buy you a baby you know because you yeah, need yeah. to love so you need to learn yeah, how to kitchen, love yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and sure enough, you know, she goes to that to that animal farm and gets, right. you know, you think she's just gonna get a bird, right? She comes back, you know, a couple of horses, a, a dog, and a bird, and all all these animals. And you know, when it starts to storm, mm -hmm. sure enough, Robert's the one who goes out to save the animals to bring them in, and suddenly he's like, he's a whole lot, he's. <laughs> He's you know, he's a whole other person, and yeah. you know it's interesting with animals. I have found some people who can be incredibly distant, but with animals, they are so loving. You know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a little it's a, it's a step forward for a guy like Robert. Maybe you know maybe yeah. because animals are uh, you don't have to engage in a conversation with them. <laughs> it's not, right, you really a easier to love. I don't know. You uh, yeah, you really do have to. Uh, you know, you have to take care of them. Otherwise, yeah, you still no, have to. they're not gonna. You exactly. know, really, yeah. Your yeah. dogs can, you know, run out and, and make their way. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, you really have to, you know, help them. And, you know, they're really innocent. Uh, I know that's a, a, a big factor in a lot of Cassavetti's films. You know, people, you know, they're, they're innocent and uh, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. So yeah. there's, there's that. And that, yeah, that you mentioned that, that scene, I'm going to buy you a baby. That, that whole interaction when they're in that kitchen, um, I, I, I just really I love en that. enjoyed it. Cause, and even when you just see John's hand when she leaves and you just yeah. see his, hand you know it's it, it's just a great you know any other i think any other well most other directors you would have a camera on john to get his reaction and then on her but yeah. this one just stayed you know static uh on her and you just see his hand which was i thought just great hand well, acting. well that's a great <laughs> that's a thing <laughs> and modeling yeah yeah that's, right that's you know what that's a really great point and this is something i wanted to to bring up is because often people when when they discuss Cassavetti's works, they have the the, converse, the type of conversations we're having where we, we really talk about the relationships and and the, yeah. the feelings and 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 yes, I mean that's the most important thing and that's really what John would want people to talk about and yeah. learn from. But I I think his filmmaking, just his his techniques. I mean, people, it's very well known he didn't use marks. Uh, the, it was very loosely blocked, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, he still obviously had to make choices in the editing room about yeah. where is he going to cut to. Right. And, you know, often his camera is very intimate and it's, you know, it's very close 
on the actors' faces. And in in that in that scene, for example, and I think this is why maybe more film schools or or film scholars have a harder time with John's films is because you can never you can never say, well, he did that shot for that reason. <laughs> right. uh, like you can in in and I'm not putting it down because I love Hitchcock, but you know, in Hitchcock, you can you can you can dissect it and this shot means this and that shot means that. But I mean, why does John only focus on Jenna in that scene from a, a basically a, a medium long shot? Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. you never even see John. And even earlier when he's talking to his son, it's on John's face the whole time, even though even though the boy is opening up about his mother being hit and it's yeah. almost more interesting as to the way John's reacting to listen mm -hmm. to him. And he's done that in a number of his films. One person could be talking and yet the camera is on the other person. So it, it's, it's, but yet at the same time, I can still really feel that other character. Yeah. You know, does yeah, that, has that ever yeah. popped out to you? Have you ever wondered? And it's impossible to say, well, he did that because of X, Y, and Z. No, you're, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. Um, you, you don't know why, other than he, well, you know, famously he's uh, uh, famous for kind of re-editing films multiple ways yeah, until he finds yeah. what he likes. And something about that moment, without seeing that other character or just seeing the character's hand in that scene, right, is more impactful than yeah. you know cutting back and seeing him actually. And say it those really lines. is, and I think it's it's yeah. just he led on some kind of an instinct. Because as I'm sure you know, he would he would co do coverage on everybody. Right, right. And someone can suddenly be taking the frame, who's who's not talking, but they're interesting. Their right. their reactions are more interesting. And I think it's because he was so great at capturing what was happening right in front of him, right then, mm -hmm. and getting it all, and then deciding he just really went on an instinct as to. Let's focus here. Let's focus there. Right. And I find that so fascinating because it, it's really from from his point of view. Yeah. Uh, uh, and at the same time, he still is bringing you in to to have interpretations, like we're talking about with the ending, or or you know why Robert couldn't love, and he doesn't give mm. you their backstories. No. So. Right. Right. And it it makes you um, particularly you know like. A, harping on that scene we're dissecting that one but uh you actually feel like you're in that kitchen yeah you know and, and it's you're you're watching her and then you know that versus you know it would I maybe it would feel more like a film if they did cut away to him watching her walk down the hallway or something like that i, I, I don't know but it's also interesting too that in that um scene you know uh, jenna is kind of in the dark um you don't really see yeah, much of her first, she's putting yeah. the coffee on the thing and then you know going over she's kind of silhouetted uh just you know kind of a shadow <laughs> uh, they, they just seem like these amazing happy accidents they yeah, just seem like yeah, really oh that, that is just a mistake but it looks it was great <laughs> right yeah yeah but as you know you know it wasn't that john came in and dick you, you know and i'm i'm only using hitchcock because he's such a well-known example mm -hmm. almost like an architect you, you know yeah blueprinted sure. it to a t you do this you do that role we and he wouldn't he wouldn't even shoot any more footage because he knew exactly how to cut it and that's another reason why the studio couldn't touch his movies because he didn't have enough footage for them to play with um but but you know john if you were the dop or if you were the camera operator he wanted you to be involved and the camera is yeah. not that it's moving a lot but it's it, you can feel the attention it's given you can feel that when the camera is suddenly, let's say early on, moving into the child's react mm -hmm. reaction when Sarah and her husband are at that divorce hearing. And that little girl says nothing, the whole scene, and suddenly the camera just goes into her and you see her just listening and the, the pain of that. Yeah. And it becomes more about what this person is experiencing. And so, you know, John, as in the editing room, I imagine, you know, he didn't. He maybe not have necessarily have told the camera operator to do that. I mean, he or he was the camera operator, which he often was. Yeah, true. Or or he did. You 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 can never figure it out because it was so collaborative. But right, ultimately, right. the decisions came down to him in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's so. that's that's true. And uh, and in reading this, 
which I picked up on watching it, but this is kind of the, uh, most of his films are, are, as you know, handheld. It's all, mm, you know, mm. handheld camera. And this one, he had tracking and he had, you know, he did, kind of, yeah. uh, sticks and everything that, uh, so, you know, gave it a little bit, quote unquote, a more, you know, professional because he was able to plop it on, you know, yeah. a tripod, <laughs> basically. Well, yeah, he, it, 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 it has a, a more polished right. look to it yeah. as opposed to faces or shadows. Uh, you know, when he was shooting much lower budget and, and he had less um, resources. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always think, you know, it, it, I always find it so interesting that this stuff is not studied in, uh, enough in terms of, 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 of how he did it. And I think it's really because people don't know. And it's very hard to tell people that. To right. tell, it's very hard to instruct people let's say in a film class uh, to say, well, we don't necessarily know how they did it, but we imagine it was because of this, this and that, like we're discussing, right, but it exactly. ultimately came from that collaboration, which is not, I don't think they're, they're telling camera operators right. <laughs> to, no. to, to be so involved with what the, what's going on in a scene. Whereas John was like, no, you have to be involved. Yeah. I want your input. And right. You wanted, yeah. He wanted everybody's, you know, input from, you know, the actor, the camera, and, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, in, uh, that he, I know, talked about was on, on when he, you know, made the, the you know, the, the child is waiting and, and, uh, yes, uh, th those films, the Too Late Blues, it was, you know, he had to tell this person to tell that person uh, to adjust the light or change the lighting, and then this person to tell this person about sound. It was, it was too, it was too, you know, regimented. And, yeah. And, it's very yeah, high. It's very layers. hierarchical. Like, right. like well, why don't we just have fun? Let's just have fun. You know, we're all here to make the picture. Let's, you yeah. know, let's, let's all make it. If you have an idea, chip in. Yeah, exactly. and, and yeah. that's exactly uh, what he was like. I, I want to ask you what you thought of the scene with the dog at the end. I mean, what do you think that was about? Where he turns into a man all of a sudden? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. I, 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 I'm not it, really. I know it's so hard to figure out what that was about. I know that the actor who was, who turned into the man dog. <laughs> yeah. He, he played the dog on stage, you know, cause that. I right. Think oh, that, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause as you know, those, an, I mean, they, how did they do the, the animals on stage? Well, exactly, they, they yeah. had to have actors do it. So I think they only had the one dog yeah. and it, there was a guy who played it. And that was the guy who played the dog, right. uh, that actor. I, I, you know, I never knew. And the only thing I could think of is, you know, he begins to connect to these animals. Uh, maybe it was like um, a hope that they'll become, that he could do that with another person one day. I mean, that, that like, as he'll, he's, he's, he's now made it with animals and, and then, you yeah. be able to connect to humans again. That's the only <laughs> thing I could think of. <laughs> that that'll lead him to then, yeah. That's yeah. That's, and I, I I do know in that in that scene, um, he uh, because at the beginning of the, I know he sees the car coming up the drive, and he was like, "Who is that?" And then right. he looks over and starts to laugh. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think I read that you know somebody he started to laugh and somebody yelled "cut" or something like that, and he was like, "What what are you doing?" I'm, oh, I thought you were I thought you broke, you know. It was like that, and he's like, "No no no, this is." This is oh, the scene, you know. yeah, I did read that. I think that's in uh, the book on the making of the, the Cassavetes directs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jesse Ventura, who was on set, wrote a book about the making of this, right. which is a really good book uh, mm -hmm. if anyone uh, wants to read it. It's a it's a really great book. But yeah, that, that it, it, and it kind of reminded me, it's a little bit of a supernatural element that kind of reminded me of, uh, in some ways, uh, opening night, you know, where, where there's the ghost. Or you know the, the woman that's uh, in the car accident. So there was a little bit of a otherworldly, supernatural kind of element in, in 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 both of those. But yeah, definitely that moment there. And yeah, who 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 knows? But it it it, it kind of leads into you know the the very end with the last image of Cassavetes just waving. And it's uh, eerie from the window. It to is. think that that was the last. I think he was in a some short film after that. Uh, but he didn't act in another feature film after that no. to think that his last ever shot yeah, that you yeah. see before in, in screen, in his screen history, is him waving with the hat yeah. and uh, through the window at his sister. And it's, it's almost, it's almost eerie as that, that great yeah. soundtrack by Bo Harwood yeah. uh, comes on. You know, I, 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 I see it 
I agree. It's it's sort of in the middle because he also wants his sister to stay, and he begins mm-hmm. to, you know, want these connections again, and and he he begins there. There is a you know judge. You know, he never had that traditional structure where halfway through the story, the character changes for the better. Right. No. But but he certainly had it towards the end where they get a little better. You know, yeah. there's hope. Yeah. <laughs> and I think in his case, that's that's the that's the best thing you can see for a guy like Robert at this point. Whereas Sarah has <laughs> Sarah has this dream where, you know, and it's such a unique dream where she's, you know, playing all these jokes, you know, as, yeah, as right. jumps into the swimming pool and she sees that as oh no sorry it was the the opera dream you know that oh, the, the opera. opera yeah and in the dream you know her and her husband make up and she sees that as uh he wants to be with me and then i love the i love the way cassivity's reacts he kind of pauses and did you dream this <laughs> did yeah. she, or did he actually say this uh <laughs> but ultimately she calls the guy in the bowling alley so yeah I, I, but then if you look at her face in the car, she looks concerned. And I never know. That's another thing I never noticed. He goes to her face in the car right before she's about to leave. And she starts to look really concerned. So yeah, right. I, it's open ended. I, it I, is. I, I always saw that as maybe there's hope with the guy, the guy she met in the bowling alley. I don't know what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit, a little bit of hope there for, for that relationship. Um, <laughs> And it's funny to think that that guy shows up in the storm too. Like exactly, the yeah. hell would drive in that thing? It was like a hurricane. <laughs> it was a pretty violent, yeah, storm going on. You know, and I'm sure in the next time I watch it too, it'll it'll take on different, as we we've discussed, there'll be different things to pick up on and and, and watch. Always. You know, even him dancing, you know, with with, uh, with uh, Diane Abbott's, you know, mother, and yeah. that, that had such a. You know, nice quality to everything. For I love it. that scene. I love yeah, that. Yeah. And and again, it's like, why would he go there? But uh, mm-hmm. you know, it for me, it's that it's the speech he says to his son. I like kids and old people because they're innocent and they don't want yeah. anything. And yep. that's the company he enjoyed. And when he was around that woman, who you know, by the way, that that was Diane Abbott's real mother, and which is Robert De Niro's mother-in-law at the time. Right, Diane right. Abbott was, was Robert De Niro's wife. Uh, and I, I saw it as really, he seemed to gravitate towards people of, of innocence. I mean, maybe yeah. it brought him back to his childhood or better times. I don't know. I mean, that's, I don't know if you, if you thought that. Yeah, it seemed, because um, you're right. He does talk about uh, the innocence of um, uh, old people and then, and then young people so it, it seemed to have he wanted to be kind of almost close to that innocence briefly knowing that you know he's gonna go off and do other things but just for a moment to kind of oh i, I like this because it is innocent and, and pure and if i can have a taste of it for just a just a moment and, and dance and let them know i appreciate their, yeah. their innocence it seemed to be more of a tribute kind of uh, if you want to yeah. look at it like like that, I just wanted to you know kind of a, a moment um, uh, with that to feel that way. Did you think that there was? Did you think he was suggesting there was something that there that there was some kind of incestual relationship between the brother and sister? Uh, no, no, I don't think I, I did pick up on anything. Because apparently in the play that was more was it much more of a stronger suggestion, whereas here. You know, right after Sarah comes, the little boy asks him, oh, do you love her? And he's like, he gets defensive right away, not yeah. in the way you mean. And he's, do you kiss her? And he's like, not, he's like, not in the way you mean. And I just thought, what an unusual way to answer. And then even when uh, Jenna Rollins as Sarah's at the farm, they say, who are you buying? The, 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 one of the people working there says, who are you buying these animals for? And she says, a good friend of mine. She doesn't say brother. I mean, maybe I'm really yeah. into it, but. It, it just it was so it's there's it's it's maybe at most hinted at uh but it, that, yeah yeah it's not it's not obvious no obviously they had you know they, they had a relationship and it's you know it seemed like they were the only two left uh within their you know their family yeah their, their yeah that's daughter, that's know. the impression i got yeah so it, it seemed like there was a connection there and i know um just kind of from my own family when you know my 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 mother and her her brother 
uh, are the only two left. Their sister passed away, and their parents, are, you know, are gone. So that there's, you know, that they, I, I, I think they've gotten a, a little bit a stronger, even though they're in different states, stronger relationship and checking into each other more uh, because they're, you know, they feel like, oh, we're the we're the last two <laughs> out of our, you know. That's what I thought fam- in terms of the way in which John told stories. I mean, you know, he's known for you know scenes that are very long, but he also which you see in this film and many of Moskowitz and some other ones, he also would have it move incredibly fast. Like, for example, when he goes to that nightclub, the the gay bar with all the, the transgender and the, the gay, char- gay, gay characters in, in that scene, um, he looks at Diane Abbott singing and they, you know, and again, it's all just, that's, it's a very, he did it very visually. I mean, he doesn't, it shows him watching cuts mm-hmm. to Diane Abbott and cuts back to him and you know the audience and that you know Hitchcock did that all the time the audience right there knows oh he's interested in this woman yeah next shot they're 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 having uh, a drink together and then in the next shot suddenly everybody's gone but that's like a month later you know because right. yeah, yeah. he even says all oh, those two girls who were singing with you um it bothers me that they're, they're not, that they're not here anymore. Right. And I, I thought he said that just because, you know, he actually felt something for this woman and it made him so awkward. It wasn't his usual transactional, no. you know, yeah. way of, of dealing with things. But I thought that was so unique. And it's the same with Sarah. She goes to the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist says you should travel, you should have sex. Boom, she's in Paris. She has that great, I love that funny scene where she's trying to talk to the guy who doesn't speak English about getting right. her bags. And yeah. then right away she's in England. But he did it in this way, which, you know, is is a very right out of the tools of, of, of cinema, where it's just, okay, what it's not a montage, but no. it is done with the use of editing and the, the mm-hmm. use of 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 of, uh, of the visual medium whereas you don't you don't see her book a plane ticket and and stuff exactly just exactly, yeah. oh i'm gonna oh you should go travel boom she's right. there the audience now knows you know or or, or him coming back and back to the you know the the, the club to the club uh, yeah and you know he's famous for not um don't give don't uh, let the audience kind of think and come up yeah, with, exactly for you know think for themselves versus yeah Boom feeding everything into her yeah, so he he really involved you that way. I mean, you you don't even see why Diane Abbott suddenly likes him because right, yeah. You know, he was harassing her, she was bored with him, and you know, he basically <laughs> took her car and drove home and she stuck with him there. But then in the next morning, they're like having a great time. Yeah, and you don't right. see the what happened. I mean, you no. just have to think, okay, well, uh, you know, maybe he started to charm her and maybe she saw a different side to him, but yeah. You ultimately, and that relationship, that's another thing, that relationship just kind of stops. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. And no. he, he, he often had that. He often, and that happens all the time. How many times do you, let's say, had a great date with a woman and she had to move and you right, right. again, you yeah. know, or she had some kind of emotional problem or you did and, yeah. and you, you got distant and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, you know, illustrated, uh, you know, uh, Robert's character being that and uh, kind of meaning women being in, entranced with them. And then it's like, okay, you know, I think so. I'm yeah. Done with that. I'm over with that. Cause yeah. Yeah. Or he got scared when he felt. Yeah. Something. Or he got, yeah. yeah. That's true. Cause too, I or... think, I think he really, he did like her. And at the same time, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure, you know, she actually wrote that scene where she comes to the door mm-hmm. afterwards. Uh, right. And I'm sure you also know this. Peter Bogdanovich actually shot that scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a great story in the, a book he wrote called uh, "Who the Hell's in It," which is him yeah. talking about. Oh, you yeah, have it. That's so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great yeah. book. I looked at that again. Yeah, last night as well because I remembered. Oh, that's right, Bogdanovich. You know, Bogdanovich was confused as to what you know, John. Why do you want me to? Come yeah, you don't need me. What do you? What do you tell? Yeah. So Cassavetes basically had to like browbeat him and say, "You're telling me as a friend, you're not going to come out." Like, <laughs> Why you don't? Need? And then came out and you know, then realized later he just needed me to get back on the set because Bogdanovich had not done anything since you know his uh, the girlfriend Diane uh, right. uh, Dorothy Stratton had been you know viciously murdered and all that and. So this was the way of kind of getting him back into where he's comfortable on a movie set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's such a great story. I, I actually, when I, I was, for, as you know, 
I was fortunate. I've I've gotten to know Leslie Hope, who was in this yep. movie, who was one of the prostitutes early on, and she has that scene with uh, John, and she she didn't know anything about it. I, I asked her if she was there. I don't think oh. she was there. She was there that day. Uh, yeah. but that's such a that's such a great story. Yeah, he's got a great uh, in that book. He's got a great chapter on Cassavetes and yeah, having, he does having John and Jenna over to dinner with Orson Welles and yeah, you know, just and and Sybil Shepherd was there and you know just you know you wish you were a <laughs> a fly in the wall for you know for for that dinner because oh my God, Welles and Cassavetes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that must have been something. <laughs> Why wasn't anyone filming that? You yeah, know? really, he should have put up a, a camera and got you know some of that at, at least. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it's, you know, Love Streams is, is definitely a unique, you know, picture. Um, for sure, for um, sure. Than anything else. And I, I think it was, you know, again, Roger Ebert talking about, you, you know, uh, you're never going to see, because what it came out in 84, and, and that's when like Ghostbusters came out and Beverly Hills. I was Pop, thinking and, the same thing. Yeah, all these other films, but, you know, the, those audience at that time, yeah, would not have known as Roger Ebert pointed out what to do with with love streams. Like no, 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 it certainly felt much more like seventies filmmaking. You have an yeah. unlikable main character played yes. by John, and, which is a very you know, but ultimately you empathize with him, right? And you yeah. feel for him, and that's a very that's a very seventies filmmaking, uh, or even you know, uh, European filmmaking. First had a lot of. Uh, right. characters portraits with unlikable uh main characters yeah uh, i just lastly want to point out uh you know he even you saw it in opening night uh as well where he he started to get interested in these you know dream sequences and mm -hmm. ghosts and um he, he even has that earth scene early on when she sarah imagines getting into a car crash with her her son her uh, daughter and seymour casal her right, husband right. And, and them dying you know and and even the way in one of the dreams he was using that tick, that uh, that clock was going tick, 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 mm -hmm, tick, tick, mm -hmm. right before she jumps into the pool. And again, it, for me, it really gave the feeling of everyone saying in the, the 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 her husband and daughter kind of getting impatient and annoyed with right, yeah. how long she's going on with these gags that aren't funny to them. Right. <laughs> which was you know that's that's him using sound that's him using even that opera you know that dream it feels like you're in a concert hall it's shot very right. darkly with the just these spotlights and yep. it's very visually striking you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's interesting to see where it'd be i mean i i really i often wonder what his films would have been like as he, I mean, I, I know he would have always explored the, the ordinary men and women in, in right. the world, but how would he have told those stories? You know, I, I, yeah, it's, true. it's something we'll never know, but we have these extraordinary films at least. Right, yeah, and you know, like we pointed out, you, you go back and, and watch them and you're going to find different different nuances, always. different things out of always. it, uh, which, yeah. is, which is, you know, really enjoyable as, you know, as someone who you know enjoys films and, and going back and watching them you can some films you go okay you know i've, I've, I've seen this and i kind of need to put exactly. it aside because you get kind of used to everything but you yeah. know his films and and you know other films too but particularly with john you, you're going to pluck out something different always that, you know, they're so yeah. fresh mm -hmm. they're they always feel like you're watching a new movie you know it's right amazing. and it's never it's never dated because it's all it talks about relationships about, yeah you know men and men, men and women, you know, regardless of what friendships and, you know, all that kind of stuff, it, it, it's all about yeah. that, which is always going to be. It's totally universal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, John, thanks so much. Uh, I really like that we, we could talk uh, this, yeah. this one out uh, that I have now done all of John's films that he directed. <laughs> uh, so I, I, and I really, I really wanted to do every single one. Cause I, you know, he's my favorite, Right. filmmaker uh so i've done i've done all of john's movies but i'm i'm certainly gonna do other uh videos on john so uh Perfect. thanks so much i'd love to have you back again to yeah no that'd be that'd be great i, I love talking about cassavetes and um talking with you about cassavetes and you know keeping the, uh, keep, keeping his name alive and out there for other people to kind of watch and yeah and, uh, and to explore and 
uh, yeah, I'm sure we could uh, do a part two on, on Love Stream because there's so many, uh, oh God, or yeah. any of his films, but you know, there's yeah. so many uh, parts in there uh, that, uh, you know, you want to go on with. And um, uh, yeah, and we, we didn't even, you know, kind of discuss uh, working on, you know, how, how it was originally right. a play. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it, it evolved and changed and John worked with Ted so much on it. And yeah. Ted Allen, you know the playwright and everything, but um, but no, it's it's been it's been great and uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely a, a, a nice. Unfortunately, his last one, but you know, it's a really memorable and a really good one. Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And for those of you uh, watching on YouTube, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the movies logo that you'll you'll see it right here floating above my head to your top left. Just uh, <laughs> click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release a new video or go live. I wanna thank all of my Patreon members and you can also see this on a, the audio version of the podcast and the links for that are in the description box below. All right, well, John, thanks again. And yep, I will you. see everyone in the next video.